This is part 65 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video and in our upcoming videos in the series, we'll discuss everything you need to know to effectively use ASP.NET Core identity to implement security related features in your ASP.NET Core application. What is ASP.NET Core Identity? Well, it's a built-in membership system. It allows us to create, read, update and delete user accounts, account confirmation, authentication and authorization, password recovery, two-factor authentication with SMS. It also supports external login providers like Microsoft, Facebook, Google, etc. and much more. We'll discuss implementing these features in our upcoming videos in the series. Now, let's add support for ASP.NET Core identity in our ASP.NET Core application. The first step is to make our application DB context class inherit from identity DB context instead of DB context. Let's bring in the required namespace by pressing Ctrl period. Notice this class is present in Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity entity framework core namespace. If you're wondering why do we need to inherit from identity db context class, well that's because this class provides all the db set properties needed to manage the identity tables in the underlying data store. In our case, Microsoft SQL Server database. We'll see all the tables that the ASP.NET Core identity framework generates in just a bit. For now, let's go to the definition of this identity db context class. Notice it inherits from identity db context of identity user and identity role. If you go to the definition on this class, it inherits from another variation of identity db context class. As we go through the inheritance chain, we'll see ultimately identity db context class inherits from db context class. There we go. This variation of identity user context class inherits from the db context class. This is the reason if our application db context class is inheriting from identity db context class, we don't have to explicitly again inherit from the db context class. So this is our first step. Make your application db context class derive from the identity db context class. Next, we need to add ASP.NET Core identity services to our application. Like many things in ASP.NET Core, we do this in the configure services method of the startup class, which is present in this startup.cs file. To add identity services on this iService collection interface, we call the aptly named add identity method. Notice from the IntelliSense, this method has got two generic parameters, T user and T role, where T user is a class and T role is also a class. So for the first parameter, I'm going to pass the built in identity user class as the argument. And for the second parameter, I'm going to pass identity role. Bring in the required namespace for these two classes, which is Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.identity. If you're wondering why we are using this identity user class, well, to understand that, first let's go to the definition of this class. It inherits from identity user of string, so let's go to the definition of this class as well. Notice we have properties like email, password hash, username, etc. ASP.NET Core Identity uses this built-in identity user class to manage the details of the registered users of our application. For every property that you see in this class, we have a corresponding column in the underlying users table. We'll look at that in action in just a bit. But if you take a look at this class, this class has got only a limited set of properties. What if we want to store additional information like the gender of the user and their city? We don't have properties for gender and city within this built-in identity user class. So what we can do is create a custom class and make that custom class inherit from this built-in identity user class. And within that custom class, we'll include properties for all the additional data that we want to capture and then plug that custom class in instead of the built-in identity user class. We'll discuss how how to do this in our upcoming videos in this series. Similarly, identity role is also a built-in class provided by ASP.NET Core Identity System and as the name implies, it is used to manage user role information. We'll discuss adding new roles and implementing role-based authorization in our upcoming videos. 
Now we want to use NID Framework Core to retrieve user and role information from the underlying SQL Server database using NID Framework Core. We configure that by calling add NID Framework Stores method. As a generic argument, we specify our application DB context, which is app DB context. This is our second step, adding ASP.NET Core identity services. Next, add the authentication middleware to our application's request processing pipeline. Remember, it is the configure method in the startup class that configures our application's request processing pipeline. So in the configure method, to add authentication middleware, call use authentication method. So in our startup.cs file, in the configure method, let's call use authentication extension method. We want to be able to authenticate users before the request reaches the MVC middleware. So it's important we add the authentication middleware before the MVC middleware. Next, we need to create ASP.NET Core identity tables in the underlying SQL Server database. For that, we need to create a new migration. Before that, let's build our solution to make sure we do not have any compilation errors. There we go. Build succeeded. Next, we want to add a new migration. To add a new migration, we use add migration command. We discussed migrations in detail in our previous videos in the series. So within Visual Studio, in the package manager console window, let's use add dash migration command and we need to specify a name. Let's call the migration adding identity and then press the enter key. We have an error. The entity type identity user login of string requires a primary key to be defined. If you are getting this error, the most likely cause is within your application DB context class, you are overriding on model creating method, but you are not calling the base class on model creating method. In this case, the base class is identity DB context. To fix this error, all we need to do is call the base class on model creating method using the base keyword. And then to this, pass this incoming model builder object. Keys of identity tables are mapped in on model creating method of this identity DB context class. By calling base.onModelCreating, we are calling the on model creating method of this identity DB context class. So the keys are mapped and we no longer should have this error when we add the migration. So let's try the migration command once again. Migration added. Notice the code in this migration creates several identity tables like ASP.NET roles, ASP.NET users, etc. Before we apply this migration to our database, let's take a look at the tables that we have in the employee DB database. At the moment, we only have two tables, employees and EF migration history. Now let's update our database with this migration. For that, we use update database command. If we take a look at our employee DB database now, notice we have several identity tables. If we take a look at this ASP.NET users table, notice the columns in this table correspond to the properties that we have in this built-in class identity user. ASP.NET Core uses this built-in class identity user and entity framework core to manage the data that we have in this ASP.NET users table. And this is exactly the reason why we have specified identity user as the generic argument for add identity method right here. And the same is true even for identity role. At the moment, in this ASP.NET users table, we do not have columns to store additional information about the users like their gender or city. In our upcoming videos in the series, we'll discuss how to extend this built-in identity user class so we could store additional information about our registered users. At this point, our application is configured to use ASP.NET Core identity. We also created the required identity tables in the underlying SQL Server database. Our next step is to register new users. We'll discuss how to do that using ASP.NET Core identity in our next video. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.